What's going on, guys? This is Tyler Beck from T Bone MMA. So, UFC Fight Night, Cub Swanson versus Artem Labov, live at 10 p.m. in the East, 7 p.m. Pacific Time in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm going over the top six fights on that card. So, the headliner, the FS2 prelims, and then all of the FS1 main card. But I would highly recommend that you watch the rest of the fights on the on this card. In the UFC Fight Pass early prelims, we got Hector Sandoval, Sab- Sandoval versus Matt Schnell. The next fight is Brian, Brian Bobineer, Bob, Barbarina versus Joe Proctor. The next fight is Alexis Davis versus Cindy Dendois. You can see those fights on the UFC Fight Pass early prelims at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time. On the FS2 prelims, you got Je- number 14 ranked Jessica Payne versus Danielle Taylor. Uh, the next fight would be Scott Holtzman versus Michael McBride. And the next fight would be number 9 ranked Dustin Ortiz versus number 10 ranked Brian Barbarino. I I have my podcast for all the rest of the fights. So, without further ado, let's get started. Presenting the champion, fighting out of the red corner, this man is a podcaster. He stands six feet two inches tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Podcasting out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, presenting the host of T-Bone MMA Podcast. Tyler T-Bone Brack! Alright, I love that intro. So anyway, without further ado, the first fight... No, not the first fight. The headliner of the FS1-2 prelims is number 11 ranked in the middleweight division. Number 11 ranked Talos Leites versus number 13 ranked Sam Alvey. Let's start with number uh, number 11... Ranked Talos Leites is from Brazil. He's got a record of 26 wins, 7 losses, and no draws. 15% were by knockout, 58% by submission, and 27% by decision. Number 13 ranked Sam Alves is from the United States. He's got a record of 10, 30 wins, 8 losses, 0 draws, and 1 no contest. 60% were by knockout, 10% by submission, and 23% by decision. Talos Leites will have a 3-inch reach advantage. Let's start with number 13 ranked Sam Alvey. He's got a record of 7 wins, 3 losses in the UFC with 1 performance in the night bonus. On a 4 fight winning streak right now after losing 2 fights in a row. He moved, to middle, he moved into middleweight rankings after his win over Nate Marquardt back in January. This will be his 5th his fight since June of 2016 so he's a very active fighter. He's got 18 knockout victories so he's looking to take the other fighter's head off. He trains on a team quest in Dan Henderson Fitness Center. Uh, of his losses, he has only been finished two times in 38 fights. One was to Derek Brunson. He, he, his only no contest this is kind of interesting here. His only no contest was due to rainfall in Wisconsin. He had an outdoor fight. He's had 38 fights in his career. A lot of been, a lot of them have been in his home state of Wisconsin. Uh, he's very experienced. Like I said, 38 fights. A lot of them were just taking place in back alleys and uh, not back alleys, but you know, outdoors even. A lot of low budget places, but that's experience though. A lot of high level experience too, I might add. Okay, number eleven ranked Talos Leites. He's got a rec- he's got a record of eleven wins, six losses in the UFC. He's got two performers of the night bonuses, one fight of the night bonus, and one submission of the night bonus. He's been in the UFC since two thousand and six. He has fought Anderson Silva for the title at UFC ninety seven, but he's gone one and th- he's gone one and three in his last four fights. But he's fought the best of the best. He's fought Michael Bisman, Gegard Mousasi, Anderson Silva. I, I, that's that's amazing. He's got 10 first round finishes to his record. He's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt under Welton Ribeiro. He's won 9. 9 wins out of his last 12. Or he's won 9 out of his last 12. 15. Get this. 15 submission victories. And 8. 8 of these were arm triangles. He's got 3 arm bars. 3 or 8. Three rear naked chokes and one triangle. He is one of only two fighters to go a full five rounds with Anderson Silva in a title fight. Okay, the next fight. The first fight on the FS1 main card. The FS1 main card starts at 10 p.m. Eastern Time and 7 p.m. Pacific Time. It is number 13 ranked Jake Ellenberger versus Mike Perry. Jake, number 13 ranked Jake Ellenberger is from the United States. He's got a record of 31 wins, 12 losses, and 0 draws. 
68% were by knockout slash TKO, 13% by submission, and 19% by decision. You'll be facing Mike Perry. He's got a, he's from the United States. He has a record of nine wins, one loss, and zero draws. 100% of his victories are by knockout slash TKO. So that leaves 0% submission and 0% by decision. Everything else is basically identical. Uh, Mike Perry is one inch taller. Okay, let's start with Mike Perry. He's got a record of two wins and one loss in the UFC. All of his victories are by knockout. Nine out of his nine victories are by knockout. He last fought Alan Jobin back in December. 0-1 when fights go the distance. Uh, he's Florida Amateur State Muay Thai Champion. Breakthrough MMA Florida Welterweight Champion. He has an eight wins and three loss amateur record. He's a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And he's got six. Six first round finishes. Okay, number 13 ranked Jake Ellenberger. He's got a record of 10 wins and 8 losses in the UFC. Two performance of the night bonuses, one fight of the night bonus, and two knockout of the night bonuses. He has been in the UFC since 2009. He has fought Mike Pyle. He's got a victory over him. He's got a victory over Jake Shields. He's got a victory over Nate, uh, Diego Sanchez. He's got a victory over Nate Marquardt. He knocked out uh, Nate Marquardt. He has losses to Rory McDonald, Robbie Lawler, Kelvin Gastelum, uh, he's defeated Josh Koscheck, Tarek Sefadeen, Matt Brown. He knocked out Matt Brown and Jorge Masvidal. He's got 21, 21 knockout bonuses, or knockout victories, I should say. He's a VFC welterweight champion and two-time IFC welterweight champion. He's got a purple, purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but he's got he's gone uh, two and six in his last eight fights. All all of his losses though were to fantastic opponents, so we're expecting some fireworks in that fight there. Okay, the next fight in the FS1 main card is Joe Lozon versus Stevie Ray. Joe Lozon is one of my favorite fighters. So let's start with Joe Lozon. He's from the United States. He's got a record of 27 wins, 13 losses, and zero draws. 30% of his victories are by knockout, 63% by submission, and 7% by decision. Stevie Ray is from Scotland. Uh, he's got a record of 20 wins, 6 losses, and 0 draws. 30% by knockout, 40% by submission, and 30% by decision. Everything else is pretty much identical. Let's start with Stevie Ray. He's got a record of 4 wins and 1 loss in the UFC. He won his last fight via split decision in November. His only loss was to Alan Patrick via unanimous decision when he was taken down and controlled for over 12 minutes. Uh, he's a Scottish Fight Challenge champion, total combat champion, uh, BM. BA MMA British champion and Cage Warrior champion. Lots of lots of medals on his wall. Lots of belts on his wall. Uh, he's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu blue belt. He's got a 7-0 amateur career record. He's been submitted. Submitted four times. So that's four out of his six losses he has been submitted. He's gone six wins and one loss in his last seven fights. And he made his debut back in 2015. Made his UFC debut in 2015. He will be fighting the always exciting, my, one of my favorite fighters ever, Joe Lozon. Joe Lozon has a record of 14 wins and 9 losses in the UFC. He's got, he set a, a record. At one point, he held the record for the most bonuses. He might still hold it now. I can't remember. He's got one performance of the night bonus, seven fight of the night bonuses, one knockout of the night bonus, and six submission of the night bonuses. You heard that correctly. Six. Six submission of the night bonuses. He's got 18. 18 submission victories. Uh, he's... And these are crazy, crazy submissions too. He was on the Ultimate Fighter 5 back in the day when he lost in the semifinal match. Uh, he made a name for himself in the UFC after defeating Jens Palmer. And that was when Jens Palmer had, had just beaten BJ Penn. So that was insane. He's got 23 fights in the UFC. So he's, he's up there with the most fights in the U UFC history. He's been in the UFC for over a decade now. 2006. He's been 5-5 five and five in his last 10 fights. And... His last fight, I I believe he lost, and he he even admitted that he thought he lost too, which I have so much respect for, and that's what makes Joe Lozon so cool. He uh, he technically had a victory though against Marcin Held, and against his fight with Jim Miller, I thought he won that fight, uh, that, but that was a split decision loss against Jim Miller, and he knocked out Diego Sanchez at UFC 200. That's insane. Who knocks out Joe Loz or knocks out Diego Sanchez? I think Joe Lozon was the only person to do it in UFC history. Okay, the next fight in the FS1 main card is number 7 ranked John Dodson versus number 10 ranked Eddie Wineland. Uh, number 7 ranked John Dodson. He's from the United States. He's got a record of 19 wins, 8 losses, and 0 draws. 53% by knockout slash TKO, 11% by submission, and 37% by decision. 
He also has an 84% takedown defense rate. That's a crazy amount. Number 10 ranked Eddie Wineland. He's got a he's from the United States. He has a record of 23 wins, 11 losses, and one draw. 61% of his victories by knockout slash TKO, 17% by submission, and 22% by decision. Eddie Wineland is te- four inches taller and has a three-inch reach advantage. Number 10 ranked Eddie Wineland. He's gone five and five in the UFC with one performance of the night bonus. One fight of the night bonus and two knockout of the night bonuses. He was the first. The inaugural WBC Bantamweight Champion, so that just shows how long he's been fighting. He's a TFC Bantamweight Champion. He's also a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's got 14 knockout victories of his 23 wins. He's on a two-fight win streak right now, and both of them were by knockout. He did go 1-3 from 2013 to 2015, but recovered with a two-fight win streak. He has fought Honey Yaya, George Roop, Uriah Faber, Jose Benavides, Scott Jorgensen, Brad Pickett, Henan Burrell, and and Takeo Mizugaki. I can't... That's hard to draw up. Or that's hard to beat. With the amount of talent that he's fought in his career. Okay, number 7 ranked John Dotson. He's got a record of 7 wins and 3 losses in the UFC. He's got 1 fight of the night bonus and 2 knockout of the night bonuses. He was, not, he was on the... He won. He won the Ultimate Fighter Season 14. Bisbing versus Miller. Via Round 1 knockout versus TJ Dillashaw. Not to mention he's got a win over TJ Dillashaw. He went five rounds with Mighty Mouse two times. He has never, never been finished in his career. He's got, he's got a background in high school wrestling. He's also a black belt in Gadeo, uh, Gadeo Jiu-Jitsu. I'm not really sure what that is. It just says it on his UFC website. Uh, he's got 10, 10 knockout victories of his 19 of his 19 wins. He lost his last fight versus John Lineker via split decision, which was not a very good fight in my opinion. He did not fight the way he usually fights, which is usually wild and crazy. That kind of worked out for him, but it, he didn't fight that way in that fight. So I was not impressed. Hopefully he recovers. Okay, the next fight on the FS1 main card is number 8 ranked Ovin St. Pru versus Marcos Ra- Rogiero de Lima. Long name there. Number 8 ranked Ovin St. Pru is from the United States. He's got a record of 19 wins, 10 losses, and 0 draws. 53% <laughs> Excuse me. Fifty-three percent of his victories are by knockout slash TKO. Twenty-one percent by submission and twenty-six percent by decision. He also has a five-inch reach advantage. Marcos Rogério de Lima. Try saying that three times fast. Is from Brazil. He's got a record of fifteen wins, five losses, and one draw. Seventy-three percent of his victories are by knockout. Thirteen percent by submission and eleven percent by decision. Let's start with Marcos Rogério de Lima. He's got a record of four wins and two losses in the UFC. He was a he was on Tough Brazil 3 on Team Sonnen's team where he lost the semi-final fight uh, via submission. He has been submitted twice, twice of his in his UFC career. So both of his losses in the UFC were both by submission. A lot of people have lost by submission on this card, by the way. Uh, he won his last fight via round one knockout in January. He's got a background in kickboxing and boxing. He trains out of San Paulo, Brazil. He'll be fighting number 8 ranked Ovid St. Pru. This has to be a win for him here. He, this is a must win fight for him. He's got a record of 7 wins and 5 losses in the UFC. With 2 performance of the night bonuses. And 1 fight of the night bonus. He has gone 1 and 4 in his last 5 fights. Although he's fought very very good opponents. Uh, he also went 5 rounds with John Jones. When John Jones came back from being suspended. The first time. He lost his last fight versus unranked at the time. Vulcan Oznedir uh, via split decision. He's fought some fantastic... This is a great card, by the way, if I hadn't mentioned that already. Look at all the guys that he's fought in his career. Gegard Mousasi, Ryan Bader, Glover Teixeira, John Jones, Jimmy Manoa. That's insane. This is a must-win fight for him if he wants to stay in the rankings. He's got a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and he also has a background in track and football, so he's very athletic. Yeah, very athletic. Sorry for the... Oh, never mind, never mind. Sorry, I lost my notes there. Okay, number, the next fight is the co-main event on the FS1 main card. Number 14 ranked Al Iaquenta versus Diego Sanchez. Number 14 ranked Al Iaquenta is from the United States. He's got a record of 12 wins, 3 losses, and 1 draw. 50% of his victories are by knockout slash TKO, 8% by submission, and 42% by decision. Diego Sanchez is also from the United States. He's got a record of 29 wins and 9 losses. That's 38 fights in his career. Insane. 
31% of his victories are by knockout, 21% by submission, and 48% by decision. He's also got a two-inch reach advantage. So let's start with Diego, the Nightmare Sanchez. Although he did change his nickname, I'm very upset about that. He changed his name, nickname to Lionheart. I'm still going to call him Diego Nightmare Sanchez. He's got a record of 16 wins, 9 losses in the UFC. He's got 6 performance of the night bonuses, including a fight with Gilbert Melendez, which is one of the best fights I've ever seen in my life. He was on the Ultimate Fighter 1, and he won that, that season versus Kenny Florian. It is the 25th season, by the way. If you haven't checked out my my podcast, I'm doing a video every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, before and after every single uh, the Ultimate Fighter event, or every single Ultimate Fighter episode. I had to plug that in somewhere in this video. He was 17-0 and 0 in his UFC career before facing Josh Koscheck, where he got submitted in that fight. He has fought at 185, 170, 155, and 145 in the UFC. He was the winner of the middleweight division in the Ultimate Fighter 1, and he defeated Kenny Florian to win that, that season. He's gone 6-5 and five went after training at Greg Jackson's gym. He's got a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He received that back in 2013. Uh, he was the king of the cage welterweight champion. Uh, he fought BJ Penn for the title back in the day, where he got head kicked and he got a bad cut, and they had to call the fight. He's gone three and four in his last seven fights, but he has gone three and three and two in his last five fights. And his last last uh, defeated Martin Mar- Mar- he, he just fe- just defeated Martin Held. Okay, number fourteen ranked Al Iaquinta. He's got a record of seven wins and two losses in the UFC. He's got a split decision. His last fight was a split decision win over. A ho- Jorge Masvidal, which is kind of, which kind of had some controversy there. Uh, he's on a four-fight win streak right now. He's got three knockouts in his last four fights. Also, he lost fought in April of 2015, and if you don't, if you remember that far back, he kind of, it was, a, it was a close decision. I had the fight going to Jorge Masvidal, and some of the fans were booing him, and he proceeded to go to the crowd asking, "Boo me? What are you gonna boo me for?" Which I kind of respected that. But on the other hand, you just kind of have to deal with it. I didn't like the way he called out the fans like that, but a lot of fight- fighters supported him. Uh, he lost He lost the Ultimate Fighter live finale, and that was Team Dominic Cruz, Dominic Cruz versus Uriah Faber. Uh, he trains at a Sierra Longo gym in New York, uh, Long Island, New York. He's a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's got three submission losses. Three of his three losses were by submission. He was supposed to fight Tiago Alves at UFC 205, but had a contract dispute, dispute with the UFC. So that's why he's been out for so long. Okay, the main event on the FS1 main card. I've been waiting for this fight for a, for a long time. When they announced Cub Swanson is back with Artem Labov, I was so excited. Number four ranked Cub Swanson versus Artem Labov. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. Number four ranked Cub Swanson. He is from the United States. He's got a record of 24 wins, 7 losses, and 0 draws. 46% of his victories are by knockout slash TKO. 17% by submission. And 38% by decision. He is facing Arden Labov. He's from Russia. He's got a record of 14 wins, 12 losses, and 1 draw with 1 no contest. 36% of his victories are by knockout slash TKO. 14% were by submission and 50% by decision. Cub Swanson has a whopping 5-inch reach advantage. Arden LaBov, he's got a record of 2 wins and 2 losses in the UFC. He trains with John Kavanaugh with, along with Conor McGregor. He, he, lost in 2000, or he lost in the Ultimate Fighter 22 finale where he was a part of uh, Conor McGregor's team. Uh, he's got 5-2-1 in his last 8 fights. And he defeated Chris uh, Ovila at UFC 202. And his last victory was in November of 2016. Okay, number four ranked Cub Swanson. He's got a record of nine wins and three losses in the UFC. He's got seven fight of the night bonuses, two knockout of the night bonuses. He's also went five and four in WEC. He's on a three fight win streak right now, and he's gone nine and two in his last eleven fights. He's got eleven knockout bonus, knockout victories, I should say, and four submission victories, two by guillotine and two by rear naked choke. He is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He's a black belt in Judo. But he has been submitted five times. Five of his seven losses were by submission. Uh, he's fought Jens Pulver, Jose Aldo, Chad Mendes, Ricardo Lamas, Ross Pearson, Charles Oliveira, Dustin Poirier, Jeremy Stevens, Frankie Edgar, Ma- Max Holloway, and Du Hu Choi. And that Du Hu Choi fight won a fighter fight of the year of 2016. That was the most one of the best fights I've seen in my life. So, <clears throat> sorry, I've done three podcasts this week. A UFC fight night, Saturday, April 22nd. 
UFC Fight Pass early prelims at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time, FS1 2 prelims, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time, and the FS1 main card is 10 p.m. Eastern Time and 7 p.m. Pacific Time. So this is Tyler Brack with T1 MMA, and I will catch you guys later.